And let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Lift our hands to Him and give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Praise the Almighty God, bless Him. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Oh, thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Now I want you to lift your voice to the Lord loud and clear and say, Father, if you are blessing only three people here today, please let me be one of them. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. Let him hear your voice. If you are blessing only three people here today, Lord, let me be one of them. Let me be one of them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed <coughs> what a mighty God we serve hallelujah what a mighty God we serve hallelujah heaven and earth even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, heaven and earth are Thank you, Father. The Lord says there's someone here today that the greatest desire of your heart is that you have at least one child. The Lord asked me to tell you, you will have many. Thank you, Father. 
Daddy says there is someone here. You are getting on in age. And none of your children is married. And so you have been praying, God, let me see at least one grandchild before I die. Daddy asked me to tell you, before this year is over, you will see more than one. <laughs> Almighty God, I want to bless your holy name. King of kings, Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the one who can do the impossible, the one who can reverse the irreversible. Oh Lord, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today, visit your children. Because it's been quite a while since we were able to meet like this. Double our blessings. Yeah. Surprise us, O oh Lord. Yeah. Bless our governor. Yeah. Bless his family. Yeah. Bless his government. Yeah. Father, bless River State. Yeah. And Lord, bless Nigeria. At the end of everything today, let every one of us go home singing a new song of victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Wave at one or two people and say, Good morning, God bless you. And then you may please be seated. But even as you are sitting down, please give a big round of applause to the choir. It was a wonderful choir. Wonderful choir indeed. Glory be to God. Well, uh, I am believing God that within the next one hour we will be rounding up because the Lord said that we should watch with him for one hour at least. But within this one hour I trust my daddy that so many things would have happened that this day will be a day you will never forget. Now, we are talking about great prayer, so we have come to pray. So as we go along, I will be calling on you to stand on your feet and pray. Right. I'm sure you know by now that when I say stand up to pray, I'm talking to the youth, the young ones. The elders can sit down and do their own praying seated. Now, my definition of a young one is someone who's younger than I. I'm only 79. So if you are older than 79, you are old. You can sit down and do your own praying, sitting down. If you are younger than 79, when I ask you to stand, you stand. So how many young ones are here today? <laughs> okay. Glory be to God. Very, very quickly, let's go on to Jeremiah 33. Verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. God is the one speaking here. 
He says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Put it in modern language. God is saying, Call unto me, and I will answer you. Who is you there? Hmm. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou, which you don't know. <sighs> I'm trusting God for great and mighty things today. Because we are going to pray great prayers. Now what's a prayer? A prayer is an appeal to someone who is greater than you, someone who is stronger than you, someone who is richer than you, to help you. We're crying to someone who, because of his position, because of his resources, because of his abilities, because of his track record, to help you. David said in Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, he said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. There is a God who is called the God of all flesh, with whom nothing shall be impossible. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. The God of all flesh, the one who can help you physically, who can help you maritally, because he's the God of all flesh. There's someone who is called the all-sufficient one. Genesis 17, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. The one who can help you financially. The one who can help you with your career because he's the all-sufficient one. Jehovah El Shaddai. There's someone who is called the Lord of Hosts. Psalm 24, you can read it from verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 10. is the one who has never lost a war. He's the Lord of hosts. He controls the hosts in heaven, the hosts on earth, the earth underneath the earth. He's the one from whom even Satan must get permission before he can do anything. He's the one who can help you if you have spiritual problems. So prayer is calling on that God to come to your aid. Now when we say great prayers, we mean there are some prayers that are casual. There are some prayers that are small. Uh, There's the kind of prayer you pray when you are tired at night. But you know you are a child of God, so you should pray before you sleep. So you say, well, thank you very much, God Almighty, for all you have done today. See you tomorrow. That's a kind of prayer. But there are some prayers you pray, particularly when you know that there's no plan B, when there's no one else who could help you. 
There's a prayer you pray when the doctor say, we are sorry, put your house in order because you are going to die. There's a prayer you pray when the bank says, we are going to repossess your house. There's a prayer you pray uh, when you are far from anywhere and you suddenly fall into labor and there's no midwife around, no one to help but God. There's a prayer you pray when all hope seems to be lost. There are some prayers that are not casual prayers. That's the kind of prayer we want to pray this morning. A prayer that even God in, he in heaven will hear. Uh, when Peter was walking on the waters to go and meet the Lord Jesus Christ, and suddenly he began to sink, he, he prayed a simple prayer. Just one word. Help. But it was a great prayer. Do I hear somebody this morning shout, Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O Lord. Let's start with great prayer number one. And that is great praise. In Psalm 100, from verse 1 to 4, Psalm 100 from verse 1 to 4, David said, above all things, he, he said in verse 4 in particular, he said, Enter his gate with thanksgiving, and he is caught with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. In other words, he said, if you are going to even come close to God at all, you must begin with thanksgiving, then you must move on to praise, and then you must begin to worship his name. In Isaiah 55 verse 6, Isaiah 55 verse 6. The Bible says, you must seek the Lord when he may be found. Isaiah 55 verse 6, not 8. <laughs> he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You must seek him while he should be found. Thank God it's in Port Harcourt this morning. He said you must call him while he's near. Glory be to God, he's near right now. But you see, the reason why you have to praise him, worship him, adore him, is because... Not only are we many here who will be calling on him. All over the world, people are calling on him today. And for him to pay attention to you in particular, you must do something that will cause him to say, all right, I will come near this one. You see, the Bible tells us in Psalm 65 verse 2, Psalm 65, verse 2. He said, O thou who hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. All flesh. So we are very many here. And like I asked us to pray at the beginning, you know God is sovereign. He's the Almighty. He does as He pleases in heaven. He may decide to just attend Nobody can query him. He has attended to only one fellow before and left. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, there was a multitude present, but he attended to only one. 
In John chapter 4, from verse 23 to 24, John 4, 23 to 24, God In other words, if you worship him, God himself will seek you out. He will leave his throne in heaven and say, let me In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 25 to 26, Acts 16, 25 to 26, when Paul and Silas found themselves in jail, when they wanted to pray their own great prayer, the Bible said they prayed, but sang praises unto God. And then God decided to draw near them. And you know the rest of the story. Several years ago, when we were going to start our first parish in Abuja, we were going to have a Holy Ghost rally for three days. And I was in the hotel there, crying to God, Almighty God, this is the headquarters of Nigeria now. And we want to start your church here. Please save souls, heal the sick. Set the captives free. Perform miracles. And suddenly I heard God say to me loud and clear, Shut up. I was glad. At least it shows he had heard me. God is going to hear somebody today. And he said, Do this for me. Do that for me. Do this for me. Am I your house help? That which I've already done for you. Have you thanked me for them? Oh, sorry, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Shut up. For these three days you are going to be here, I don't want to hear anything from you other than praising me. Yes, Lord. I tried. It was difficult. Lord, thank you for everything you have done, but don't forget tonight. And he said, shut up. Just praise me. By the third day, he spoke. He said, son, all you have seen thus far is addition. I'm about to begin multiplication. Some years ago, one minister in charge of Abuja pull down 15 of our churches in two weeks. We didn't even miss it. Why? Because we praise God and he decided to multiply us. Stand on your feet. This morning, forget everything you want to ask and just praise God. Praise him so much that he will come to you and do more for you that you can ask for. Go ahead. If you praise him more than the fellow next to you, he will come to you first. If you don't praise him, if you don't adore him, he may go to the fellow next to you. Praise him greatly. Praise him. Adore him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Forget all your problems. And just praise him. Do it with all your heart. Don't be a gentleman. Don't be a lady during this period. Just go ahead and praise him. Praise the King of Kings. Praise the Lord of Lords. Thank him for all he has done for you thus far. Give him glory. Give him honor. 
Give him adoration. Bless his holy name. Well, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I glorify your holy name. King of kings, Lord of lords, ancient of days, I worship you. Unchangeable changer, glory be to your holy name. I praise you. I adore you. There's no one like you. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the one who was. You are the one who is. You are the one who is to come. Almighty God. Oh, your name is wonderful. Your name is Counselor. Your name is Mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. I bless your holy name. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. For all you have done for me thus far. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I give you all glory, all honor, all adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Oh yes, I'm here this morning to glorify your holy name. I'm here this morning to praise you. I'm here this morning to thank you. Thank you for all you've done for me thus far. Thank you for what you will do. Yes, Lord. I know you. There's no one like you. You are the Lord of hosts. You have never lost a battle. You are not going to lose the battle concerning me. I know who you are. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are more than sufficient. I know, Lord, you are more than able to meet all my needs. I praise you, Lord. You are the most high. You are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. You are wiser than the wisest. Lord God Almighty, I know who you are. You are greater than all my enemies. Oh, I know you are the oldest. You are older than the oldest. I know that before the mountains were brought forth, you are being here. And that's why I know you can uproot every mountain in my life. I praise you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. May God accept your thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Please be seated. That wasn't bad. I'm sure you'll get better as we go along. Great prayer number two. There are so many of them in the Bible, so I just decided to choose a few. It's found in Numbers chapter 16. You can read it from verse 1 to 33. Number 16 from verse 1 to 33. What happened was, some people ganged up against Moses. And they decided to get some people together to oppose him, to slow him down, to resist his ministry. They were trying to see if they can truncate his destiny. And so Moses prayed a prayer. He said, Oh God, let the ground open his mouth and swallow all my enemies. And the ground opened his mouth and swallowed the enemies and then closed up again. Now I know you are going to say, ah, but can a Christian pray that kind of prayer? 
It depends on who the enemies are. If the enemies are sickness and disease, I think it would be okay to cry to God and say, God, today, before I leave here, every sickness, every disease in my body should disappear into the ground. Do you think a Christian can pray that kind of prayer? You see, because when God healed Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, there was no trace of leprosy left in his body. Even the scars disappeared. The fingers that had dropped off grew up again. Everything that was called sickness or disease in him went into River Jordan. I want to decree to somebody here today, provided you will pray, every sickness, every disease, including those that the doctor said they can't handle, that you brought into this place, will disappear into the ground. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20, Mark 5, 2 to 20, you know the story. One of my children said, I always refer to this man. I mean, yes, I like his story. This man had so many demons in him that there was no way he could become anything in life. So he was living by the tomb. Mad people would see him coming and they would run. But then something happened. The one who is called the Lord of hosts showed up. All the demons left him. They didn't just leave him. They entered into some pigs. And all the pigs drowned. You see... If one demon remained, the Bible says if a demon goes out of a man, he will go about looking for somewhere else to stay. If he doesn't find one, he will go and get some seven more demons to come back. Every demon that has been troubling you we disappear into this ground here today. You see, because when all the demons were gone, that man became an evangelist. The plan of God for his life is to make him an evangelist. The demons came to truncate his destiny. Whether you know it or not, the devil has a rough idea of what God wants you to become. And he's determined that that will not happen. But because of the way we are going to pray today, every evil force trying to block your way to the top shall be swallowed by this ground. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, from verse 1 to 7, the Bible tells us of a woman who was bankrupt, so heavily indebted they wanted to sell her sons. The Bible says she cried. She didn't whisper. She cried to the God of Elisha. By the special grace of God, not only was her debt paid, she never had to borrow again. I had the testimony of one of my sisters, one of my daughters here, who said she was heavily in debt. 
There was no way she could pay. But the creditors cancelled the debt. It's similar to the testimony of one of my sons. He was so heavily in debt that the creditors called him. He was almost 50 years of age. They asked him, how are you going to pay our money? He said, even if I'm paying you a million naira a day, for all the days that I have lived on earth, I can't pay this debt. And they looked at him and said, debt forgive, forgotten and forgiven. There is still a God who can put an end to all your hardship in a day. I want you to stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Most High God and say, Father, everything that will not allow me to become what you want me to become, let the ground swallow them up. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Everything, sickness, disease, demons, everything that will not allow me to become what you plan for me to become. Let the ground open its mouth and swallow them. Swallow them. Swallow them. All sicknesses, all diseases, all reproaches, everything causing me shame, everything that would not allow me to reach my goal, Almighty God, let the ground open now and swallow them all. Everything in my life that is causing people to say, where is your God? This morning, this morning, right here, Lord, let the ground open its mouth and swallow them, swallow them all. Every one of them. Everything. Including those I don't even know. Every force. Walking against my destiny. Let the ground open his mouth and swallow them up, Lord. This morning, let all my problems disappear into the ground right now as I pray. This very moment, let the ground swallow them all. Every demonic influence walking against me, Lord God Almighty, let the ground open its mouth and swallow them all, every one of them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. The next great prayer is found in Joshua chapter 10, verse 10 to 12. Joshua chapter 10. Verse 10 to 12. 
Nobody had prayed that kind of prayer before. But then Joshua lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, ah, some of my enemies are about to escape. Sun, stay where you are. Moon, stay where you are. Until my victory is complete. <laughs> you know, in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, the Bible said there was a blind man called Bartimaeus. He was sitting down in darkness, in poverty, in shame. He had enemies that he didn't even know. It was a reproach to the city. And then he heard that Jesus was passing by. And he cried until Jesus heard. And the Bible said Jesus stood still. Now you may not understand Jesus stood still. But when you read Acts chapter 17, verse 28, Acts 17, verse 28, the Bible says, In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Put that in simple language. The entire universe revolves around the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Jesus stood still, the universe stood still. When he stood still, the sun cannot go on to set. The moon cannot come out. When Jesus stood still, the universe stood still. What, are, what is the implication of this? You see, God has a timetable for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. It tells us clearly, God has a time for everything, everything. But then in Daniel chapter 2, verse 2, 20 to 22, Daniel 2, 20 to 22, the Bible says this God... Because he's omnipotent, because he's sovereign, because he does as he pleases, he can change times and seasons. <laughs> In Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, 21 to 28, the Bible tells us that a woman came to Jesus Christ and said, please help me. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. He said, I, I'm in trouble. Because my daughter is in trouble. Jesus Christ told her, it's not the time for, for heathens like you. It's the time for the Gentiles hasn't come. <laughs> the woman said, the time hasn't come. Uh, my own time will come today. So I'm not going anywhere until you answer me. In John chapter 2, from verse 1 to 11, John 2 from verse 1 to 11, in the wedding in Canaan of Galilee, when they ran out of wine, and Jesus' mother came to him and said, they need wine. Jesus said to her, Mama, my time to perform miracles has not come. The mother told the people there, don't move an inch. Just stay here. Whatever I ask you to do, do it. That day, not yet, became now. There might be some of you here that what you are believing God for is actually scheduled to come in three years' time. But it can come today. Yeah. 
You know, it is the Lord himself who said in Matthew 11 verse 12, Matthew 11 verse 12, he says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent have taken it by force. I will tell you just one story and then you will pray. We're having a Holy Ghost service in London. And there was this elderly woman who came to visit her children, uh, sisters in London. And the word of God came that there was a woman in the crowd that God asked me to tell you he has subtracted 10 years from your life. Ah, the woman said, it's me. I turned to the sisters, I said, don't call me auntie anymore. I'm younger than some of you now. You think that sounds stupid. And a few minutes later, another word came. I said, there's someone here who they thought had already passed the age of childbearing and she never had a child. The Lord asked me to tell you, oh, by next year, you will surprise the doctors. The woman said, ah, it's me again. She had not menstruated for years. That day she began to menstruate. A year later, she brought her child. You're going to talk to the Almighty God today. And if I were you, I would pray this prayer with all my heart. You're going to tell this son, this son up here. Son, in the name of Jesus, you are not going to set until God has completed my miracles. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, I command that this son, this son, will not set until God has completed my miracles. Open your mouth and cry unto the Almighty God. Pray as if you mean it. Pray as a warrior. Son, I command you, you're not going to set until God has completed my miracles. Son, I command you in the name that's above every other name. You will not set today until God has finished my miracle. You are not going to set, son. This is the day I'm going to receive my breakthrough. So you are not setting until I got all my breakthroughs. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, son, you will not set until God has given me my miracle. Today is my day. I'm not waiting till tomorrow. So you better hear me loud and clear, son. I'm the son of the child, I'm, I'm the son of the child of the Most High God. I am the son of the one who made you, I decree. You are not going to say it until I've received all my miracles. So you better take note of that, son. You are not certain today until I've received all my miracles. That's my command. My father in heaven said, concerning the works of his hand, I should command him. I command you, son, you're not certain today until I receive my miracles. There's no way for you to say. So you better stay where you are right now. You're not certain until I've received all my miracles. 
My miracles must come today. Today, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. My, my case must be set to today. Sir, before you can say. That's my decree. My decree is based on the word of God. He said, concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. I am commanding now. Son, you stay where you are. Until I receive my miracle. Thank you, Father. Today is my day. This is not, I'm not joking with you, sir. I must collect my breakthroughs from God today before you can say it. That's a decree. That's a decree. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, the Spirit of God is saying to me that some of you are praying this prayer timidly. I didn't dream of these prayers. He gave them to me. And so, you're going to join hands with your fellow. He said in his word, if two of you shall agree, as touching anything you ask on earth, it shall be done for you by your Father in heaven. Pray in agreement now and say, Father, I agree with my neighbor. The sun will not set today until we all have our miracles. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. This is not a joking matter. Cry to the Almighty God. We are in agreement, Lord. We are more than two. And we are in one accord. And we decree in agreement. The sun will not set today until we receive our miracles. The sun will not set today until we receive our miracles. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Remako sheke rende remaka katunde remako chunda. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'm in total agreement with you. So shall it be. Please be seated. The next great prayer that we've chosen to pray about this morning is to be found in 1 Kings chapter 18. Ah, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, don't be afraid, I will preserve you. Yeah. First Kings chapter 18, from verse 36 to 40. First Kings 18, 36 to 40. You know the story. I was... This competition between God and Baal on Mount Carmel. And the prayer that Elijah prayed is a very simple prayer. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, let the fire fall. Very simple prayer. And fire fell. And that's a prayer we are all going to pray today. That the fire will fall. 
You see, because when the fire fell, thank you, my father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, because of the prayer you prayed earlier on, he said, I will give you complete physical overhaul. I me to explain to you what that means. You're going to get even brand new brain. Oh, thank you, Father. Now, when the fire fell on Mount Carmel, the first thing that was consumed was the offering. When God accepts your offering, then you know that your future is settled. When he rejected the offering of Cain, you know the story in Genesis chapter 4, Cain ended up becoming a vagabond. When he accepted the offering of Solomon, in Second Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15, Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, everything Solomon asked for, he got. What he didn't even ask for was added. When the fire falls, even if all that the fire does is to take your offering to heaven, your future is settled. You know, throughout the period of the life of Solomon, he never fought a war. In an age when every year kings go to war, not a single king attacked Solomon. If the fire falls for you today, you will not have to fight another battle. But the fire did much more. When the fire fell, it turned the firewood on the altar to fire. The potential is in every wood to become fire. That's why we call it firewood. But some wood will die and rot without becoming fire unless they come in contact with fire. In every one of us there is a potential. Nobody may know you right now but you have the potential of becoming the president of Nigeria. You have the potential of becoming a world-renowned evangelist. If anybody had said to me when I was a lecturer in mathematics at the University of Lagos that one day I would travel around the world preaching the gospel, received by president of nations, etc., etc., I would just tell the fellow, Better go back to sleep if you, if you dreamt of that. But in every man there is a potential that requires the fire to get it going. There's a potential in each and every one of you to become one of the greatest people in the whole world. When some 30 years ago they were listening the writing the names of 50 most influential people in the world. And they came to Nigeria and found one. And that's my humble self standing before you. I, I wonder how could that be? How could that be? But when the fire comes, firewood becomes fire. You know, if the fire falls for you today, 
The next time the enemy see you coming, they will run. For 13 years of my life, when there was a misunderstanding between my father and the relations, and they told him that by the following morning, they will use me for breakfast. For 13 years, I ran. Because if they said they will use you for breakfast, if you are around by tomorrow morning, you will be breakfast. Now, when I want to go home, and all the forces of darkness hear that I'm coming, they run. Why? Because fire fell. There's someone here today, because of the prayer you're about to pray now, the fire is going to fall on you. Your offering will be accepted. Your firewood will become fire. And you know what? That same fire licked up the water that was around the offering. Water is supposed to put out fire. But there is a fire that uses water as fuel. And you know what that really means? It means if the fire falls today, you will never weep again. Because the Bible says, God will wipe away all tears from your, air, from your eyes. I want you to stand on your feet. And if you have not prayed like a lion or lioness before, pray this one. And say, Father, let the fire fall on me. Go ahead, cry out to the Almighty God, let the fire fall on me. Let the fire fall on me. Let me become a terror to the enemy. Don't let me ever weep again. Let the fire fall on me. And everything that is causing me sorrow. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall for me. Let the fire fall on me. Let my wood become fire. Let me become a terror to all forces of darkness. Let the fire fall, Lord. Let the fire fall for me. Let it fall on me. Lord God Almighty, wipe away all tears from my eyes. Let the fire fall. That the anointing may destroy all my yokes. Let the fire fall, oh Lord. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Oh, yes, Lord, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Yes, Lord, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Thank you, Father.
Thanks, Lord Titus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Receive the fire in Jesus' name. I say, receive the fire in Jesus' name. One more time. I say, receive the fire in Jesus' name. Let me hear a fiery hallelujah coming from you. Please be seated. You're doing very fine. There's one particular prayer that I will want you to pray. Even if I can't touch the others, I must touch this one. It's found in Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to fifteen. Second Kings chapter two. From verse 9 to 15. Elijah was about to, to go. <laughs> Don't be worried, though. I'm, I'm not going anywhere yet. So he turned to Elisha, who had been a very faithful son. He said, what do you want me to give you before I be taken away from you? And uh, he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Hmm. Elijah looked at him and said, ah, you have asked a hard thing. You know, there are some prayers that when you pray it, if some people hear you praying it, they will say, what's wrong with you? They will say, ah, you're asking for too much. I have good news for somebody here today. There's nothing you ask from God that God will consider too big. Yeah. See, we are dealing with a God who is more than sufficient. I told you that when I was praying in Moshe in 1981, all I asked God for was, God, build me a boy's quarter. Just a small house. He answered and said, Son, don't ask me for a house. I've decided to build you a city. A city compared to a boy's quarter. That, that, that's far apart. You have been asking for great things. I want you to begin to Im imagine the greatest thing ever that you can ever ask God. Because he's going to do it for you today. Yeah. This boy said, you are the one who asked me to ask. I have asked. Hmm? The father said, all right. I will commit God by saying, if you see me when I'm being taken away from you, you can have what you want. The boy said, thank you, sir. Thank you for agreeing with me. Don't worry yourself about the, about the condition. Leave that to me and God.
I have committed the Almighty God on your behalf that those who will really, really pray today, no matter how difficult what they ask for, that God should give to them. If you say, God, what I want is to be raising the dead, so shall it be. If you say to God, Father, at least once a year, single-handedly, I want to be able to feed everybody in River State. If you say that, so shall it be. If you say, Father, because we are talking about great things, hard things. If you say, Father, bless me so much that I alone will be able to pay the school fees of every student in River State, so shall it be. This is a day that is different from other days. I've explained to some of my topmost pastors that this year is a unique year. The last time we had a year like this was 1,011 years ago. I don't have the time to explain that to you. The next time we are going to have a year like this is 911 years from now. This is a year you see only once in your lifetime. It's a year like no other year. And this is a day like no other day. You are going to ask God for the hardest thing possible. And you are going to ask him with the assurance that before this sun sets, that request is going to be granted. Are you ready to pray? Stand on your feet and lift your voice to the almighty God. And say, Father, all things are possible with you. Uh -huh, then go ahead and tell him what you want him to do for you. All things, all things are possible for you. I know what I'm asking is hard. But all things are possible unto you. Do this for me, Lord. All things are possible for you, my Father and my God. From today onward. Let me begin to operate in an anointing that in the world had never dreamt possible. Oh yes, Lord. When I wave my hand, let the lame begin to walk, the blind begin to see, the deaf begin to hear, the dead will begin to rise. When I travel, when my plane touches ground in any nation, let anyone within a hundred kilometers distance from the airport receive a miracle. Anytime I decree, immediately let it be established. All things are possible with you, my Father and my God. Anoint me overflowing like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Ramoko Shiki Render Ramoko Ronda Karamaka Shiki Tende Kedemoko Kunda. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. It shall come to pass before the sun sets. If you believe that, shout a really big hallelujah. Please be seated. I'm about to close. I want to appeal to some of you people that I see that seem to be eager to get into your vehicles. <laughs> a day like this comes only once in a lifetime. Don't move an inch. Because God has not finished with us. You know, the greatest of all these prayers, apart from praising God, is to cry to God and say, God, have mercy on me. Everyone who called on God for mercy, got mercy. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3. The leper came to him and asked him for mercy. He got mercy. Bartimaeus cried to him for mercy. He got mercy. Anytime somebody cried to God for mercy, he got mercy. Because many of us don't deserve the miracles we are asking God for. But God is rich in mercy. So what we do not even desire, He can give to us because of His mercy. And the greatest prayer any sinner can pray is God have mercy on me. Oh, thank you, my Father. <laughs> then he asked me to tell someone. He said, very soon you will know that I know your address. Father. I want to give the other call, but Daddy wants me to tell someone that very soon you will be singing. And your song will be I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me in the name of Jesus. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well. So I want to appeal to those of you who have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Please. Please. For your own sake, surrender your life to Jesus today. 
The rest of us will be praying. We'll be praying for ourselves. We'll be crying to God to have mercy on us. And those of you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you will come. There is space in front here on the third section of the stadium, right in front of me here. You can come very quickly and come and stand here. I want to pray especially for you that the Almighty God who saved my soul, who turned the tide of my life around, will save your soul too and give you a brand new beginning. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you begin to come. Come and stand here so we can pray for you. The rest of us, we are going to stand on our feet and we are going to cry unto the Almighty God, Father, have mercy on me. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. I need your mercy, Lord. I know I might not qualify for all the miracles I've been asking you for. But please, Lord, have mercy on me. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come now. Come very, very quickly. Come and stand. Don't, don't kneel down. Don't kneel down. Don't kneel down. Stand up. Stand up. And let them come close. Let them come close, please. Let them come close. Come. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, come from all over the place. And come walking on the third section of the stadium. Not on the field. The third section. Come quickly. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. All I'm crying to you for, Lord, is mercy. Mercy, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Those of you coming to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, please come. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, make sure you are already standing here. And please, let them come a little close so that there will be room for all those people who are coming. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Oh, thank you. Well, you can remove the barrier there so that you can put some people on the grass. Thank you. Thank you. God bless the commissioner. Cry to God. Lord, have mercy on me. This is a very special day. Lord, let me receive special mercy. Let me receive special mercy, O oh Lord. Let me receive special mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Five. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. There's, there's room for you now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Lord, have mercy on me. Six. Keep coming. Keep coming. And those of you who are outside the stadium, find your way in now. Thank you, Father. Seven. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Eight. Keep coming, keep coming. I can see you. Pray to God, this is your day, your day of salvation. 
Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm crying to you for mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Eight. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yes, Lord. Have mercy. Oh, yes, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This is your day. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep coming, keep coming. Nine. Keep coming. Just keep coming. I know some of you have to come from a far place. So I'll wait 10 seconds more. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now those of you on the way, just keep on me. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. Uh, those of you already in front, I'm sure you're already crying to God for mercy. He's going to save your soul right now as we pray. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Out of your mercy, forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash them clean. This day, as you save their souls, write their names in the book of life. And Lord, every prayer that they have even prayed before now, answer them by fire. Every other prayer they'll be praying from now on, Father, answer them by fire. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now, there might still be some of you still on the way. Just keep coming. Now, those of you already in front, I rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. And I'm going to need your names, I'm going to need your address, I'm going to need your prayer requests. So, just for about three minutes, we will give you an opportunity. The counselors will give you a card, fill that card very quickly, very quickly, and then pass it back to the counselors, and we'll wait for you to finish before we proceed further. The, the, the choir will give us some song. The rest of us, I want you to please remain seated. Before you leave, I'm going to anoint your handkerchiefs so that you will leave here with something substantial that you'll be using for the glory of God. Uh, so the rest of us, let's be seated. And the musician will give us some music. Please fill the card very, very quickly. As soon as you finish, 
pass it back to the counselors and then we'll be able to go to the next item and then you can go back to your seat god bless you
Now I want to pray for you. You've been praying for yourself. I want to pray for you now. Lift your hands to the Most High God. And let your amen be loud and clear. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you on behalf of all your children. Thank you for bringing this day to pass. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, I decree in that name that's above every other name that every force walking against any of these your children the ground will swallow today. Father, I decree that before the sun can set today, all of these your children will have their testimonies. Yeah. Father, I decree this very day concerning all of these your children, let the fire fall. Father, I decree that the greatest desires of these your children, no matter how big, no matter how difficult, be given to them today in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Savior, because you are the one who sent me to this your people, I'm asking for something extra. If there's something this your children should have asked for that they forgot, Father, give to them all the same in Jesus' name. Have mercy on all of us. Let this day be a day we will never forget. And I pray that in your kingdom, none of us will be missing. Yeah. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Amen. Now, just one or two little things and then we'll be on our way. Number one, we want to say thank you to the Almighty God for what he has done. And we'll do that very quickly. We'll give him our thanksgiving offering as is our custom. And then, whatever you are even wearing today is going to be anointed. So very, very quickly, the choir will give us a song. We will take our thanksgiving offering and then we ask the anointing to overflow and soak you from your head to your toes in the mighty name of Jesus. Over to you, Ben.
Just share testimony with you and then we'll pray. It was a day like this at the camp that the Almighty God came down heavily and He said that whatever we were wearing in that day will be anointed. And there was one boy who was going to walk the following Monday wearing the same dress because he was going to attend an interview. On the third mainland bridge, the bus had an accident and caught fire. Everybody in the bus perished except this bus. And so, Father, saturate every piece of cloth here today with your anointing so mightily that the devil can never again touch these children. Receive their offering. Sanctify it, Lord. Use it for your glory. And I pray that in your kingdom, none of us will be missing. Thank you. Father, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Why don't you wave that handkerchief? Let it Amen. And then lay it on your own head and prophesy to yourself. Lay it on your head and from now on. All my yokes destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. I operate under special anointing of 
of the Most High God. Go ahead, prophesy to yourself. Oh. <laughs> 